Good evening, Dr. Andy Kirshner here, visiting you from Back Together Central here in Valley Kinwood. A few weeks ago, I posted about a gentleman who sent me a letter that uh, he was upset that I had discussed something to do with spinal injections. He went and got a spinal injection and it didn't work for him and he wanted to know why I recommended something that didn't work. Well, at that point, I posted about how there are certain techniques that are good for certain people, certain things that aren't good for others. And when you read about modalities or hear about the modalities that I talk to, talk to you about here at the Backwards blog, keep in mind that not everything is going to work for everybody and you need to consult your own physician before you try any of these things. That being said, I promised that I would give you a little bit of a rundown of some of the different techniques, who they're good for and who they're not. Now, I thought for the first one I would give you a little bit of a primer on osteopathic medicine, seeing as that's what I do here at Back Together Central. Now, osteopathic medicine is about 100 years old, and it was developed by this gentleman, A.T. Stills. He liked to walk around with a bone a lot. I'm not really sure why. I have a lot of pictures of him, and he's always walking around with a bone in his hand. And He lived from 1828 to 1917, and he looked around at the medical community around him and saw the different techniques that were being used to treat patients, things like mercury and bourbon. And he decided that these weren't necessarily the best approaches for his patients. So he sat down and tried to devise a technique that was going to give his patients better results and that was more natural and made more sense to him. So what he did is he looked at the musculoskeletal system and he said, you know, I'm going to start with this because that's how we interface with the world. The musculoskeletal system is how you pick up food, it's how you go and do things, it's how things get done. So if your musculoskeletal system isn't working well, ain't nothing else is going to work real well either. So he started with there and he started to realize that there was a relationship between the musculoskeletal system and the organs inside. Traditional medicine thinks of the organs inside as sort of like the key thing and A.T. Still's approach was that the organs inside were just support systems for the musculoskeletal system which if you think about it makes a little bit of sense. What he found is that by looking at, this, at the skeleton you were able to find segments of your spine, parts of your body that weren't functioning optimally and he developed techniques to kind of move things around in the spine and the rest of the skeleton to get things functioning as well as possible and he believed that by doing that you would enhance health. So if you did manual stuff on the skeleton it would affect the organs and if you did manual stuff on the organs it would affect the skeleton and that was what he called somatovisceral which is when you work on the skeleton and it works and uh, affects the organs or viscerosomatic when you do something to the organs that have an effect on the skeletal system. And it was a very holistic approach and he got good results. Now back then it was intended as a complete medical system. It was designed for treating all kinds of anomalies. Today most osteopathic physicians who do manual medicine use it for musculoskeletal pain. In my practice probably 80% of my practice is dedicated to treatment of musculoskeletal pain and most of those patients get manual medicine here in the office and thank goodness I get some good results. Now it's not for everybody. Who's it not for? Well First of all, people with severe de degenerative disc disease probably shouldn't get it because you run the risk of making that disc condition worse and causing all sorts of havoc. And in my time practicing, I've had patients that I couldn't make better, but I've never made anybody worse, and I'd like to keep it that way. So stay away from people with severe degenerative disc disease. Also, people with severe osteoporosis. Some of these techniques involve pressure. If you put pressure on a bone that's brittle, it's going to break. Probably not a good idea. The third group that should really avoid it are people with cancer, and it's also for the same reason. Certain cancers can affect bones and make them brittle and put you at bigger risk for breaking things. But even more importantly, there is some evidence that suggests that cancer goes through the lymphatic system and by doing some of the soft tissue techniques that we do here in osteopathic medicine, you may actually promote the spread of cancer, which obviously isn't what we want to do. Now, if you are getting osteopathic medicine, it's nice to come in here and get work done. My table's right here behind me, you can't see it, it's just out of the shot. But it's good to get those corrections get op functioning optimally, but it's also important to think about what things you're doing in your life made your spine and the rest of your skeleton start to work incorrectly in the first place. That's where we start talking about the lifestyle things that I discuss with every patient that walks through my door. You can read about some of those things in my book. Little pitch here. 15 Surefire Tips for Relieving Back Pain plus 192 Others Just In Case. Um, where you disc uh, I will discuss with you some of the lifestyle things that got you to that point in the first place. Now, this wasn't intended to be a pitch for my book. It was actually intended to be uh, part of a series where 
I'm going to tell you about those different things, uh, different approaches. The letter that I got was from a guy who was very unhappy with spinal injections, so that's going to be what the next post is about. Thank you so much for stopping by. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Be well.